Welcome, everybody. We have another episode Against the Grain podcast. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys for all your feedback. All of you guys have been supportive. We appreciate you guys so much. With that being said, I got a special guest today. I got Ryan Horton in the building. I got his boy with him as well, too. They're going to be with us for a worship night. Ryan, how's it going, bro? You guys just flew in from Florida, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took that uh, cross-country flight. Yeah. Did about five hours in the air. It's good, man. We're, we're feeling super pumped, super strengthened. Amen. Excited to be with you guys. Amen. That's good, man. And tell me about your story. So you, you're, from, you're in Florida now. Have you always been in Florida? Or I have. I've been born and raised in, in Florida. As a matter of fact, the little city that I'm living in now is where I've really spent most of my days on the playground. You know, there you uh, go. Oh, <laughs> oh fresh prince. Fresh prince of, <laughs> yeah, of yeah, Florida, yeah. huh? Yes. Yeah, so, no, no, no. So, yeah, I, I was born and raised out in Florida, a little town called Lakeland, Florida. My grandfather came there probably 70 years ago mm. and pioneered a work, a church out there and pastored that church for probably 50 years. Wow. Um, and so then obviously my dad, you know, raised his family out there, obviously as part of that family and uh, just love the little city. It's right in between Tampa and Orlando. Okay. So we get the best of both worlds. We get to go see Mickey Mouse mm. in Orlando and then we go, get to go see the water over in Tampa, you know, so that's, nice. that's a cool spot. Yeah, That's good, man. It's muggy out there, man. It is, it's man. Muggy, it it man. ain't like uh, Cali weather, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we got it, that little breeze. Y'all huh? got that breeze. Y'all <laughs> got this. Yeah. I always told Mike, too, man, I feel like out here you got the palm trees and the mountains. Yeah. And they're kind of just chilling together. Yep. Uh, you don't see that too much. You know, we just got the trees down there. But, yeah, the weather's a little humid. But uh, but I'm telling you, God's down there. You know what I'm saying, man, bro? That's good, you know that's what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I got to ask you, man. What, yeah. are, what are you as far as nationality? Do, you got a little, yeah. you, you look white, I'll be honest. <laughs> but you got a little, bl- little bit of black in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, are, what are you like? That's uh, hilarious, man. Yeah, so I, so I get that quite a bit. Um, I, I really don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I am Caucasian brother. Um to to Anglican parents, really, um, I would not known that. But I don't, I don't feel it, yeah. and that's crazy. Yeah, for some reason, uh, the Lord has really knitted my heart to cultures, mm-hmm. um, and so I never really identified solely with Anglicans or, or white folk. You mm-hmm. know, um, really, when I got started in ministry. Um, I, I linked up with a brother and he put me into almost every denomination that African Americans offered. So I was in the AME church. I was oh, wow. in a missionary Baptist, I was a primitive Baptist, mm. in all these places. Um, and then, you know, to, to throw it full circle, my wife's Indian. Mm. So my children, they're, they're, you know, white and Indian. So I just, I've always had a heart for culture. Yeah. Um, and so anyways, yeah. So to answer the simple, the yeah. simple answer is I'm white, but I don't feel it. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't act it too. Like, yeah, you can just feel like you got something. But like you said, you're just cultured. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. Well, throw us way back, man. We know, we know about Ryan today, doing everything, blowing up everywhere, doing your thing. But throw us way back. Talk to us a little bit about your beginning, your childhood, kind of yeah. growing up and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. So I mentioned before, um, was raised in a PK home, a mm. pastor's kid. Uh, my grandfather came to our city, like I said, probably 70 years ago, started a ministry. And I'm going somewhere with this. He was first generation Christian. Mm. So not even first generation pastor, but first generation Christian in his family. And I just think about that, like that just blows my mind. Like yeah. just the heritage, the legacy. He ended up li- living until he was about 95. He just passed away this last September. But oh, man, just such a huge man of faith mm. um, and, and also didn't, I don't even know why I'm talking a lot about him other than just to honor him. He yeah. just meant so much to me. Um, didn't even really have like a high school diploma. Mm. Uh, I just, I would always ask him, Pop, how'd you do it? He built several buildings on this 10 acre campus that the church was on. And uh, he just said a, a lot of oil putting on my knees so I mm. could stay in his presence, you mm. know, so I could stay before him and in the place of prayer. He said, you know, I just had a lot of carpet time and just the Lord just did it. Mm. And so anyways, um, saying all that, because that was such a huge part in my foundation, um, just who he was and then who my dad's been in my life. And so again, raised up in a, in a PK home, um, 
and it was uh, Church of God, so they are, are charismatic Christians, and so we like to get a little wild, look mm. to get a little crazy, and let the Holy Spirit do His thing. Um, but yeah, so so raised in that space, and I think that probably for most of my upbringing, probably until my probably nineteen or twenties, mm. uh, early twenties. I really was what I would consider a nominal Christian, where I just kind of showing up, going through the motions, uh, playing the part, doing my thing in church ministry with my with my family. Mm. Um, and it was about 2021 to where I had a real significant encounter with God. Wow. Um, by 22 or 23. Um, the Lord opened up some really cool doors for me to go and start singing background with some real popular Christian worship guys at the time mm. running around in, in the in the you know Christian industry space. So I did that for probably a year and a half or so, and I remember just the Holy Spirit said, "Okay, I'm, I'm shifting seasons mm. and I'm, I'm leading up to something." So then He says, "Hey, I want you to go sit on a bench." in your city at this particular lake. And he said, I just want you to go get to know me. Mm. And, um, and so I, I remember telling this artist that I was running the roads with and, you know, super exciting time of my life. Hey, I feel like the Lord is, is wanting more of me. And honestly, in my soul, in my flesh, man, I was like, God, is this you? Or did I just <laughs> eat some bad pizza or whatever, yeah. you know? But yeah. like, because it was just crazy what, what he was asking me to do. Um, but honestly, it's a season that I reference to this day. Mm. Uh, that there was a real heart shift, a real supernatural just encounter that I'd had with him, man, that just broke my spirit, that marked me. Um, on that little bench, I sat there wow. for almost two years wow. and just got to know Jesus from nine to five every day and just wow. tried to lean in as hard as I could um, to, to who he was. And so anyways, uh, yeah. And so, so from that, I've, I've led in the local church context for many years, mm -hmm. leading worship, love the local church like mm -hmm. crazy. Like I just see the plan of the Lord all over the local church and what he's using the local church to do to build kingdom. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so uh, that's been a huge part of my life for probably the last 10, 15 years. I, I, you know, I, I ended up leaving my dad's church with his blessing mm. to go work for a few other pastors and leaders in the central Florida area uh, during my mid-20s and did that up to probably the last... Uh, five years, I was wow. working for um, uh, you know a pastor full time on their staff. Mm -hmm. About five years ago, the Lord called me to to kind of do my own thing in Lakeland. Um, and and to give a little context there, I'll, I'll be quiet because I know I'm talking. No, a lot. no, that's good. I'm but to give a little in. context, so five years ago, the Lord called me to to start a worship night in my city, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that he was going to ask me to keep it going. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just a one-and-done thing, um, and so anyways, we started in a, in a little clothing store, maybe a, about this size here, mm -hmm. honestly, wow. and the first night we did it, probably 200 people showed up, and uh, even greater than that, the presence of the Lord. And I'm sure you've been in encounters like yeah. this before. This, it was one of those moments where I could have sang the ABCs <laughs> and people were just laid out, prostrate on the mm -hmm. floor, just like from the first song to, to three hours wow. later. I mean, the presence was so thick in that wow. place. So it was just one of those moments that really marked, marked my life. And so anyways, just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, hey, I want you to go for it again next month. Mm -hmm. And so for like three or four months, it was just rolling with the Holy Spirit as he would give orders. About the fourth month then, he said, hey, man, I'm establishing something here. And we look up and we did it for probably another, I don't know, three, four years that he sustained once a month worship nights, wow. which it was a citywide thing. And if you're in the worship space, you know, like that is an act of God yeah. in and of itself oh, for... Yeah a four-year run to mm. be sustained through a citywide worship night that really wasn't based 
on a church or, or connected to a church. It really was just open for the city. So, And that was a clothing store? Yeah, it started wow. at a clothing store, and then it outgrew that probably about four months in, and we had mm -hmm. to start renting this little space downtown. Um, five, 600 people started showing up wow. per month, and, and we just started seeing the miraculous breakout. And just God do, God do what he, he said he would do mm -hmm. uh, for the New Testament believer, for those who would believe, Amen. you know, would believe for it, would lean into it. And so anyways, that's a little bit about me. That's probably the long version. <laughs> no, that's and good. And I pray I didn't bore people, but that's kind of yeah, yeah. where I've been. No, that's good. And, uh, you know, the, the typical story of the PK, right? Like they always think they're like, oh, prodigals and they come back. Yeah. But it seems like you kind of always kind of stayed straight. Is that kind of, do I have it, do I have it right? I don't know that, I'll say it this way. I think I've, I stayed straight in the public eye. Mm, yeah, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> but I think really at the end of the day, you know, um, men, we're all deeply flawed in need of Jesus. And yeah. until we really have that, that encounter, it doesn't matter if I was out smoking pot every night or sitting in the church pew with a fake hand up, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It, like God's not impressed with either, either yeah. situation. So um, I really try to paint that picture for people mm. because even though I wasn't wilding, so to speak, yeah. the heart posture was definitely not focused or aimed towards the Lord. Until so you had that that park that that bench you're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That so, was kind of the moment. So there was a real bad relationship that I was in mm. uh, with a with a young lady, and again, definitely not throwing any shade on yeah. on, on anybody there because it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was you know totally me being goofy uh, and, mm. and doing goofy stuff, but but it just led to it led to to craziness in my heart mm. and the bench encounter was really the thing that I felt like really brought freedom. Mm. You know, I believe God operates in, in process and in moments. And I've seen God, like from my grandfather, for instance, he went down to the altar one night, smoked his cigarettes, doing his thing, and instantly was delivered from it all, threw it away, was wow. done with it. God's worked with me in a moment like mm. that, where I was just instantly, things that I was battling through, just instantly the desire and the craving went away. Mm. But for this particular season, he worked with me through process. Mm. He said, I want you to sit here on this bench mm. and stay a little bit, and yeah. I'm going to shift some things in your heart if you'll do it. Man, that's good. You ever go back to that bench now? Literally at least once a week. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I don't believe, like, God's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, He's meeting us yeah. everywhere. Um, but there is some, some times where you find these places, the, these oases, um, where you've learned to build rhythms with God mm -hmm. and it just makes it easier for your heart to open up because you know how to lock in in these places, yeah. whether they be, you know, this particular place is by a lake, it's peaceful. You're looking at his creation yeah. and what he's done. And, you know, so for some reason in me, that's that that's easier from a heart to connect there. Mm -hmm. Certainly not the only place we connect, you right. know what I'm saying? But um but yeah, so I go back there pretty often. We me and my wife, we live just right down the road from that nice. little bench and, and yeah, that 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 place just means so much because the Lord said so much there. Mm -hmm. He's made even promises that I'm living in today. So really? for instance, when I was sitting on that bench early on, he mm -hmm. said, Bro, he said uh, he said, your wife is about to come. Well, I'm mm. living in that promise That's right good. now with a wife and two kids That's and good. just the beauty of the Lord, you know? So how'd yeah, you meet special. her? How'd you guys get together? Yeah. So I was serving on staff at a local church in our area. And, um, so I had always had this weird, just little thing in me where I just said, Hey, I don't want my good to be spoken evil of. So I won't date anybody at the church that I'm serving at or that mm. I'm, that I'm on staff at, which as I look back, I'm like, dude, how would I've ever gotten married? Like that's <laughs> all I did was work on church yeah. staffs. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I had this, this, uh, fiery Latino, mm. um, uh, mother in the faith. Mm. She was pastor's wife at that time and where I was serving. And she was like, bro, like that is the goofiest thing I've heard. <laughs> like you're 27. Please. Like we're going to work you like crazy yeah. at this church. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to have any time to go socialize anywhere else. Mm. This church is a big church. Like you should start looking for somebody here. Mm. So 
I started praying about it and I was just like, Lord, do I have a release to, to kind of look if somebody caught my eye? And I felt like he said yes. And so it's like four months later, mm -hmm. I, I ran into her and um, the rest is history, my brother. Man, let's go. <laughs> I didn't let's play go. around with it. We were both older, a little bit older in life. I was, you know, 27, 28, somewhere around there mm -hmm. when we kind of both met each other. And so... I feel like there's a level of maturity there, you know, at that age where you're like, man, <clears throat> let's get past the games. Yeah. You know, who are you? This yeah. is who I am. Yeah. Will it work? Yeah. Will it not? And so it moved pretty quick for us. We were we were walking down the altar probably a year and a half in. Really? Yeah. It's like when you know, you know, huh? Yeah. And and even more so for her culture, like mm. she's Indian. And so they do a lot of arranged marriages, mm. but her parents came over to the U.S. And so they got a little bit Americanized and her dad was open to what they call love marriages. Mm. And um, but he was just like, listen, brother, like if you're going to do it. Mm. Like you, you don't got five years. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> like these other white boys out here playing around. You said, "Listen yeah, up, I, my boy." <laughs> yeah, I give you like a year, year and a half. So I was that's like, funny. "All right, man, uh, I'm with it." You yeah. Know? So yeah, that's we, cool, we man. That's awesome. Done. And it's good. I mean, I'm sure she's supportive of everything that you do because you're traveling mm. a lot, you're doing things and stuff. So that's important. You obviously picked the right one, and I'm sure it. it, it you you weren't traveling at the time that you met her. Obviously, things have changed, yeah. but it seems like you have a good support at home. I tell you, um, there is no way that I would be able to do what I'm doing right now without my bride. Mm. She is absolutely incredible in every way. Uh, like, like the old saints, the old brothers that have any wisdom, they mm. always say, man, we outkicked our coverage mm. for sure, bro. Like um, this woman, she's just amazing in every way. And, and really... She is the epitome of helpmate. Mm. Um, there really is a beautiful partnership uh, between her and I. Um, and, and, you know, even last night we were talking through some things. She's like, man, like, just listen to me on this, babe. And here's what I feel like the Lord's saying. And I'm leaning in when she starts using the Lord said yeah, you know, yeah. lingo. And, <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, you know what, babe, there's a ton of wisdom to that. And mm. so... Yeah, she she is my best friend, um, and and I honestly, you know, there's there's days in ministry where they're just plowing, 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 and um, sometimes you you wake up and you you feel a little shook or you feel a little defeated or you feel mm -hmm. a little, dis little discouraged, and I'm just telling you, the Lord has used her to I feel like even at times believe in the vision and the dream that he's put inside of me more than I believe in. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, just to have that extra jar, that extra kick, that yeah. extra umph has has made the world world a difference. Like it, it really has been born of the spirit, our relationship. So yeah, I can't I can't love on her enough. She's amazing. It's amazing, man. And kids, you got the whole deal at home, huh? Bro, it's awesome. The blessing of the Lord. Yeah. Kids are such a blessing. And we want more. Um, we got two boys right now, and we're raising them up to to be world changers. To Amen. at five and uh, well, my my oldest right now he's he's almost four. My youngest is about to turn two, mm. and um, yeah, I'm just I'm believing by five and six they're gonna be slaying giants. Man. Hey, let's go! Yeah, yeah that's yeah, awesome, man. Real. That's cool. No, it's good. Um, how did the, uh, it's cause obviously everyone, you know, knows you now through social media and seeing the videos and stuff like that. Talk to me about those early days, how that kind of started. What year was this? Give me a little background. There. Yeah. So bro, this is crazy. It's literally just started. Like, um, I think it was, well, I'll say August, this coming August will have made a year. Really? Yeah. I feel like it's been like a couple of years know, I've man. seen you or it's, something. It's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. What the Lord has done. Um, but yeah, I definitely started putting stuff out mid-August mm. of this past year. And by the end of September, 1st of November is when it really started snowballing and just taking off. Um, and what I'm doing right now I, I mean, I literally have no words for it. It's just something that 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 I fell into. Mm. There's no other way to describe it. Uh, the Lord and His sovereignty dropped this 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 tension in my heart is really where it started. So I had led worship 
like I was telling you, for years in yeah. a local church context. And I even had led this ministry, you know, that I started this worship night, you know, doing, doing month, monthly meetings. Um, but I'd always leave these gatherings and just feel like, Lord, this is beautiful what you're doing. Like, it's very evident that you're here, that you're moving. Like, we're seeing tumors dry up on people. Mm. We're seeing, you know, just real stuff yeah. happen. Um, but God, I want to go where you're not necessarily embraced or accepted. Mm. And I want to release the kingdom and see what happens. Like, I've always had mm. this little bit of, I guess... John the Baptist anointing, I guess, like where I just like, man, give me the locust, like let me yeah. do the wild thing, you yeah. know? And so it's it's led with this tension in my heart over the last couple, probably about a year, mm -hmm. I guess is really where it started culminating to where I'm like, man, God, this is beautiful what we're doing to strengthen the body in the local church and the, and the local, you know, church setting. Yeah. But, but God, I want to go where the wild things are and mm -hmm. I want to release the kingdom. And I... I want to become activated. I want to get wild, mm. wild for you in, in a good way, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and then my prayer is that it would provoke others in mm. the body mm. to step out and be activated. Not yeah. that we're trying to get people to have street ministry. Yeah. I honestly wasn't <laughs> looking for it either, but that we're trying to get people to understand that if God will come and meet us, and in the middle of Bourbon Street and mm. Mardi Gras, mm. then he really does want to use me when I go to the grocery store to meet people there, or when I go to the to the school to meet people there, or when I'm on my job to meet people there. Mm. Like he's the God that has no restrictions, no limits. He loves coming into the uncommon place and bringing the thing that's out of order back into order. That's good. That's good. Man, that's good. And I, I love that you said that where the wild things are because, yeah, I mean, people can see, people can see it all over. It's, it's wild out there. Yeah. And it's like, that's what we're called to. We're yeah. not just called to the four walls. I feel yeah. like you really understand. You have a grasp, a good grasp on that. Um, what was your first video that, like, you really, like, um, you noticed, that, like, whoa, this thing's booming? Yeah, so it was a, it was a cover song. Uh, something about the name Jesus. Something mm. about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. I know Kurt Franklin. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't know why the Lord decided to use that video, but he did. And then I just thought it was going to be a one and done type thing. Yeah. And then I put something else out. And I was already, like I say, pretty consistent for about a month and a half before anything happened. I mm. had this little routine, this little strategy I felt like the Lord told me to do. And yeah, so then after that, put another video out and the Lord just breathed on that. And then, and then it just started getting crazy to where, um, just, it was snowballing. Like every yeah. video just started doing really, really well. And, um, and, and, you know, the beauty of that is this for me. So I, you know, I dabbled even early on, uh, in like, I would I was writing music, recording music, so I was knocking on doors in the music industry, mm -hmm. uh, in the Christian space, being like, "Hey, like this is cool. Like it's it's cool that that we've got you know six seven thousand followers online. Yeah, I don't want it to just live in front of those folks because we're investing so much money in it. So yeah. you know, it's it's the dreamer that God puts in inside of every individual." Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we want, we want, man, we want to maximize, excuse me, we want to maximize um, uh, the, the, the potential reach, so right. to speak, you know. And so I was knocking on these doors and pretty much all these guys were just, just brushing me off and not really interested, right? Um, because I was at, at ground zero with yeah. what we were trying to pioneer. And I just heard the Lord say, man, just stop the knocking, mm. stop the pursuing of all that stuff and we were really pressing hard after doing the worship collective thing with the ministry that I had started in Lakeland. It was called The Worship Well. Mm -hmm. And we had brought six young worship leaders together. We had probably, not, like no joke, probably had recorded about 30 songs in a year during wow. COVID. Like live recordings, just pressing in. We were, we were doing our due diligence in the partnership between us and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And... 
so anyways, I mean, I, I mean, I was fully invested in that thing. My wife and I were funding the whole thing. We were, we were, you know, everything that we were doing, we were, we were paying for it. Mm-hmm. And long and short of it, uh, the Lord just dropped this idea in my heart of, to go to the streets and start lifting up worship in these uncommon places uh, through the tension that was there. And but I was still had full intentions of doing the worship well thing, mm. really pressing in on that and trying to make that the main thing. I didn't think that what I was about to engage in, I didn't have high hopes for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was going to do it out of obedience, but I was just like, okay, God, here I am. Do, do you know? Yeah. Have your way. Do whatever. But my heart was connected to this other thing that I'd been pioneering for the last four or five years. And so a month and a half in, then it all starts blowing up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, yeah, God, you're here. You're doing something. Why street ministry? <laughs> but you're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it. And I'm here for it. Yeah, like, yeah. like, there is no way. And we could talk about this a little bit later in the, in the, in the podcast. Like, yeah. There's no way that I'll ever be able to deny that God's hand is on this thing after mm-hmm. I could... I could literally tell you 30 to 40 testimonies right now. Mm. That's literally just supernatural stuff. There's yeah. no way to explain it other than God. Yeah. And it's just an indicator that he's breathing on it. So here's what I like to say. I feel like with what I was doing with the well, I feel like eventually we'll get back to that at some point maybe. I, I have mm-hmm. no clue when that is. But I feel like that we were saying God here's our offering. Would you come and bless it? Mm. And it's beautiful. He says, man, I see that heart posture. I love it. And I'll do some cool things. But I feel like what happened with where I'm at right now is somehow I stumbled into, God, this is what's on your heart. This is what you're doing. And I just happened to stumble into it. Mm. And he said, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. So I'll breathe on it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Does that yeah. make any yeah, sense? Yeah. For sure. And so one, one reality is God come bless my thing. The other reality is Lord, I want to sit prostrate before you just pressing in until I learn what your thing is and mm. then get involved in that. That's good. Yeah, that's good, man. And it, your, your videos have been a blessing. I'm sure man, hundreds of thousands of people have seen it. I'm sure your, your views, I mean, it, it's insane. The amount of comments, I mean, people are really engaged. What was, what's been some of the, um, some of the major cities you've been in? So obviously you've been here in LA. Uh, what are some of the major cities yeah. that, you've, that you've hit? You said you, you were just down in Mardi Gras. Like yeah, yeah. You, you hit it all. I feel like you've hit, you've hit everything. What are some of the major ones that you've, you've been to? Yeah. So we, um, we started in the Orlando area cause that's where we're closest to. And then we, Went over to Ebor City in Tampa, mm-hmm. which that's like a mini Las Vegas strip okay. in Ebor. Um, and so we, we started there. And, you know, every, a lot of people on the comments always talk about, man, you're so bold, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I love to speak into that. And I'm probably going to do like a small teaching at some point that mm-hmm. I'll maybe put on YouTube or something like that. Yeah. Because my heart really is to activate people. It's not the Ryan Horton show. It is the <laughs> kingdom. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so long and short of it, um, you know, I, I really uh, believe that that the Lord is <clears throat> he, he's wanting to really raise up he is raising up uh an, an army yeah. in this season but anyways back to your question where have i been so we started in tampa and orlando mm-hmm. and started really passive there um but the more i've done it boldness or courage is a muscle and that's what i want to teach on eventually so y'all y'all just stay tuned yeah in. <laughs> but long and short of it the the cities. So then we went to New York City, mm. and there has just been such a special grace in New York. Really? I mean, wild supernatural stuff just happening out there. Um, we did, we've done some stuff in the subways. We've done some stuff in Times Square. We've done some stuff, some other parks there, Union Square Park, and just different places. But every time I've been out there, there's been a heavy supernatural grace mm-hmm. where the Lord just breaks out in power like crazy. Uh, we did, obviously, Mardi Gras. Uh, the Lord did a ton there. Um, we've done Vegas. And yeah. the Lord showed out in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Right on the Strip, uh, right? Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there in, in Las Vegas Strip. Um, 
and got stories for days on all these trips. Um, where else have we went, Michael? Figueroa. We got L.A. in the house. L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, right sorry, on sorry. Fig. So we did L.A. The Lord told me to come out here for the Grammys. I saw that. And I got stories for days on that, just what he did, what he did there. But, um, yeah, so those, I think, are the, the main. Where, yeah, where did we go? Knoxville, Tennessee. You guys did Hollywood, too, here, right? Yeah, yeah, Hollywood. Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. Where have so, you not been? So where's, Man, the, been where's the difference between Figaro and Hollywood? What is that? Oh, it's night and day difference. So talk to me about Figaro. I, did we do Figaro? Yeah, Figueroa is like right where Staples Center, well, yeah, the crypto yeah, yeah. arena. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's like in downtown. Yeah. And then west of that, you got Hollywood gotcha. and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Just different crowds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I just love it. You yeah, just go way the different crowds are. in West Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It oh was yeah, coming up with the with the gangs out there, and the for Lord sure. was giving us words for them, and yeah, it was it was fire. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, has uh, has everything? Because we see like the positives, right? We see everything, but has there been some pretty crazy times? Have you guys met some real opposition or anything? Absolutely. And <clears throat> one thing that we're trying to do. So again, this has all happened so quick. Mm -hmm. What the Lord's doing. Um, that I'm trying to catch up to it mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, really kind of put some infrastructure in place. One of the things that we're really trying to move towards is fully documenting what God is doing. Mm -hmm. So not just shooting when we're on the street, but really trying to keep cameras rolling all the time and then make many document documentary series. Oh, yeah. How do you say that? Documentary series? There you go. Or docu-series, docu-series, docu -series, right? That's there the word go. I'm looking for. Make these many docu-series mm -hmm. that would then tell the story of God in L.A., tell mm -hmm. the story of God in Dallas. Yeah. What he's doing on these trips is insane. Yeah. So to answer the question, um, we have seen some wild stuff. Michael uh, in... In um, where was it, dude? What was it? Mardi Gras. Sorry, mm. <clears throat> um, we were in the thick of it. So we were there the weekend before Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday is the culmination of Mardi Gras. So mm. the weekend before and after are huge mm. for the whole Mardi Gras season. So I mean, it was wall to wall on Bourbon Street. You could literally barely move. It was so wow. thick with people. It's one of the most chaotic environments that I've ever been in in my life. Mm. Um. And this guy came up to us early on in the night, was a tap, bro, had tap dancing stuff <laughs> on his shoes. It's a tap dancer? Tap dancing on the street, came up, you know, uh, New Orleans, real, real oppressed, just mm -hmm. people out there, just, you can just see it all over them yeah. when they're really, really, you know, oppressed of, uh, of the enemy. So anyways, he comes up, I could tell something was going on with him, but I didn't think much of it because... Everybody, their mama out there was was lit up. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. Saying? So he came up doing his thing. We started ministering to him, and he seemed real reasonable the first time we were ministering to him. He came back probably 30, 40 minutes later, and um, he was about to fall. He was about to stumble because he was lit up on some drug or something. Yeah. And my guy Michael just braced him for the fall because he's about to fall into our music gear too, his mm. piano and everything. So we're just trying to stop him from falling so he wouldn't hurt himself and mess up our gear. And <laughs> so then the dude just jumps in a huge fit of rage. Wow. I'm going to tell you that, that what the Lord does is crazy. So he goes and rears up to punch Michael in the face. Ooh. And... Two other guys are walking down the sidewalk, mm. and they start calling, calling, at, calling him out. Basically, like, "Homie, you better watch it." And so they come up on him, and he moves on, gets all up in their face. There was nose mm. to nose, and one of the other brothers basically was like, "Yo, homie, you want a bullet? Like, mm. I'm, I'm about to cash you out right now if you want to be on your back, dog." Ooh. And, um, and so then when he said all that, dude jumped back and then the guys with the guns came over to us mm. and was like, bro, we know God sent y'all in this atmosphere. What? We're going to stand right here. So this dude Dang. don't come back and mess Some with y'all. street security right yeah, there. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, do it. <laughs> Lord, do it. So Michael's yeah, about yeah, to get yeah. hit in the face by a tap dancer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tap yeah, dancer yeah. shoes, tap, that would have been tap wild. Tap dancer on meth. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. yeah. That's the worst. Those are the worst yeah, ones, bro. man. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't put. Yep. Jeez, that's crazy. So, but yeah. one of my favorite clips, the dude was definitely drunk. Um, 
uh, you were like, he loves you, he loves you, and he's like, you were hugging them. You probably yeah, have yeah. so many clips. I don't know if you remember, but I don't know what where that was at. Was that Holly? Was that in that Port? was Orlando? Okay, yeah, that clip was in Orlando, and I remember this was this was a monumental clip for me and my heart personally because this was only our probably third or fourth time doing mm. the stuff on the streets and again that boldness muscle right so i'm still yeah. trying to build it still trying to lean into it and um so he, he and his crew came behind me and started mocking me initially really? in the camera yeah yeah really? wow and it's kind of making fun you know what drunk people yeah, do drunk, like yeah. when they don't understand they just kind of go off or whatever and so the Lord had me turn around and just start singing the song of the Lord over mm. this dude. Mm. And his demeanor goes from mocking to like, dude, I need you out here. Like Ooh. you're literally changing my life right it's now. Crazy. And then he gets real weird, pulls me in and gives Gave me a you kiss. A kiss. On my cheek. I'm like, dog, <laughs> I'm like, dog, hold up. Like you need me out here. That's cool. But that kissing hilarious. me, bro, you about to get jacked, homie. No. <laughs> Some holy hands. Yeah, huh? yeah. So, no, that was kidding. funny. He was, he was Hispanic. We showed the video here. Yeah, After yeah. it was done, I was like, all right, whose cousin was that? <laughs> <laughs> Come get him. <laughs> <laughs> whose cousin was that in here? That's funny, man. That's wild, yeah. man. But that was cool. You were singing over him and everything. Yeah. I mean, you drunk as a skunk, but you, you were right there, man, just singing over him, yeah. ministering over him. I think the Lord is showing me the more I do it, um, the importance of the seed sown. Mm. Uh, I don't think oftentimes in the body, especially when we stay cooped up in the four walls, yeah. do we see the value of the seed scattered, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, yeah, I, I, I've got a story, but I want to save it. I, I don't know why I want to save it, but I want to okay. save it for a little bit later here in the in the, in the the talk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just I think that if if we would get to a place as as kingdom people, uh, of really understanding the value of the seed, we would make it our life's goal to scatter it everywhere we go. Amen. And so um, I don't, I don't know definitely what's happening in every single one of these scenarios. Yeah. But I do know that we are making a deposit. Amen. And it's real. It's authentic. And I know God's on it for yeah. sure. Um, so yeah, that that moment was for sure special. That's so good. I got a question for you on that because, yeah. um, so you're on social media right now. People are seeing what you're doing and stuff like that. And it's, I, I was kind of thinking about, it, I was like, man, it's kind of tricky because on one, on one point, like you said, you are, you know, you're doing these videos and you want people to yeah. step out. You mm -hmm. want people to go out there and do what God has called us to do. Right. Great commission. But at the same time, there must be people out there that are trying to copy you that are trying to copy it for the, maybe the wrong reasons. Oh, I see Ryan out there is getting all these views. I want to go out there and do it. And maybe with the wrong heart, have you, have you encountered that? Have you had people trying to jump on, kind of take you a, a certain direction, trying to follow a clout, right? It's, it, that's big in social media yeah, right now. You know, I think, I think, um, anytime the Lord starts giving influence, uh, to, to people, this has my, been my prayer lately. Um, Lord, give me or heighten my level of discernment mm. to see who is being sent with true godly wisdom mm. and caution uh, and then who is being sent to domesticate or tame the roaring lion mm. that loves to go where the wild things are. Mm. And so, you know, discernment helps kind of cash that out. But you know, as far as people sort of jumping on the bandwagon, so to speak, yeah. and wanting to do something like this similar, uh, man, I am like super all for it. Mm. Even if their motives aren't pure initially, yeah. uh, I think the Holy Spirit can can change anybody's motives. Yeah. Um, I know there's been seasons in my life where he's changed my motives, you mm. know what I'm saying? And he's, he, he's redefined things. And so, you know, um, we are ever... We are ever growing until the day of perfection, yeah. until we stand before the Lord face to face, right? And so I'm just like, man, if, if you want to go sing about Jesus with bad motives, do it. <laughs> because like, if you keep singing long enough, yeah. the same God you're singing about will shift that heart, will That's shift good. that motive. That's and, good. And do something special internally. That's good. And then if this shifts here, then he can do something externally. 
That's good. That's good. Yeah, so no, I'm all really about good. it. I'm, I'm all for it. And honestly, I, I feel even a mandate to raise to raise a company up, an army up that mm-hmm. would go out and, and slay giants, you Come know. Um, you know, again, the, the end goal isn't to to have this coalition of street ministers, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or street worshipers. It really is. The end goal for me is just activation. Yeah. And so whatever that looks like is what I'm about. You That's know? good. That's good. What do you feel is like, uh, I guess, you know, worship has been attacked this last year. You know, you got worship artists out there, people dropping people. And, you know, there's been a whole bunch when it comes to, you know, quote unquote, worship, the culture, right? Worship mm-hmm. leaders, all that. What do, what do you feel God's, God's saying to worship leaders right now? Or what message would you have to worship leaders that are, that are maybe going to watch this? Sure. That, Like you said, are in their local church, you know, they, <laughs> they've been serving and, you know, they, they see the big time names maybe. And, you know, they want to be there in that platform, but they've been plowing and plowing. Or, you know, maybe they see your videos and they're encouraged and they're like, man, and I want to step out like that, but maybe, you know, worship's a little bit more structured here. What would you say just to encourage worship leaders that are out yeah. there right now? Yeah, so I think um, what I would say to the individual that's been plowing faithful in the local, con- uh, in the local church uh, uh, confine, I would say to don't take the bait. Mm. Um, and the bait is we live in this social media driven um, space, right? Um, which God is on. He's yeah. on media. He, yeah. He's breathing on it. Um, but the bait says, I've got to be like them. Mm. I've got to, like the measure of success is what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and that's just never the heart of God. Um, his measuring stick, the way he measures things is totally, totally different. Um, for instance, uh, I've got a friend that has just stepped out and started a, a food pantry Mm. and they are seeing like crazy, crazy, miraculous miracles every single Friday that they do this food ministry. Mm. And the Lord told him specifically not to advertise the food ministry and not to say anything to anybody about it. Mm. And within probably two weeks, they have had, you know, 200, 300 cars showing up in this food line, right? Mm. For me, he said, put what you're doing online. Mm. Do do you see what I'm saying? The, the, The approach... Is, is night and day. One, he says, don't tell anybody about. Mm-hmm. The other, he says, put it in, in the face of... Uh, because at the end of the day, the Lord investigates the heart. Yeah. And he knows um, what the right method, the right approach, the, the right thing mm. is for that particular heart mm. to foster growth. That's the end goal for God always is That's that good. are you growing towards me? Are you moving towards me? Is your faith being activated? Is 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 things really coming alive on the inside or are you just a nominal Christian, right? And so he knows the human heart and he knows each individual human heart better than anybody else will ever know. And so what he asked one to do mm-hmm. might not be the thing he asked the other to do. That's good. Um, but that's why I would just say keep our eyes off of what Christendom and the Christian music industry has made the standard. Mm-hmm. Those guys that told me, Ryan, we can't help you at all mm-hmm. at grassroots yeah. are the same guys that have hit me up and been in my DMs mm-hmm. the last four or five months yeah. because they see that, okay, the Lord is on this thing. And, God, and so that's all they're trying to do is just catch the next wave. Right. And so instead of trying to figure out what homie's doing and mm. what this person's doing and kind of try to, to make a simulation wave of what yeah. they're doing, no, 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 just get your ear to the ground, hear mm. what God's saying for you, then you go start a wave and watch God breathe on that. And then people will come to that, mm. you know? That's good. That's good. Man, that's so good. I love this wisdom, man. Yeah, this is yeah. everything you're pointing yeah. out right now. I got a question though. So you're yeah. married. Yeah. You're married. And definitely if, and, married. And I love it. <laughs> married life is the best life. Come it on. is. Amen. Whoa. Amen. Uh okay. So if your wife is anything like my wife, yeah. 
they could worry about us, right? Yeah. They worry about us and everything. Has your wife ever hit you with, Ryan, you got to slow it down, man. What are you doing out there? Yeah, you got to yeah. be careful. You got kids at home. Has she, ever, has she ever hit you with that before? Have you ever felt that like, man, I'm kind of in the trenches right now or whatever the case is? Yeah, I think, yeah, she, she's, she's human. You know, when we come back and tell her stories about Michael getting almost punched <laughs> in the face and us running into gang activity out here in L.A. and um, us in the hood in, in, in New Orleans and hearing the gunshots a couple doors down, like mm. no, no wife with two kids at home likes to hear those stories. You, know? you, you just like not tell her those? No. Nah, you say, tell her everything? Yeah, I tell her, I tell her about them. Um, Really, so she can keep pressing in in prayer. Yeah. My wife's not an extreme worry wart. Mm. Um, she really does. Like, the Lord has given her the gift of faith. But again, I'm not trying to paint an unrealistic picture to say that she never is concerned. Yeah. She is, you know, at times for sure. Um, <clears throat> but I think, you know, <clears throat> I think with the, just the stories of what God is doing out here, yeah. I think... She's like, man, you'd have to be blind yeah. not to believe or not to see the hand of God on this thing. And so if he's, if he's, if he's taking care of you in all these other spaces, he's going to be faithful in, in some of these more hostile, you know, spaces. Yeah. Um, also, you know, we don't roll up into areas like the big bad wolf either, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Be like, you know, trying to act goofy. We, we use wisdom as well, but mm -hmm. at the same rate, we don't we don't mask fear with mm. the word wisdom, mm. you know? That's good. We really try to be, be, be led of the spirit and go by faith. Mm. And, um, and sometimes I get that right. And then other times I don't. So mm. I'm going to tell him myself for a second. Mm. So when we heard the gunshots in new Orleans, um, I'm like, yo, it's getting, it's getting real out here. Um, and, I didn't really realize, like, we had, we had got in an Uber two times that day, mm -hmm. uh, during the day, and <clears throat> um, basically the Uber drivers are like, yo, you need to get in this car now. We got to really? get out of here. And we didn't really realize that, we, <laughs> that we, we picked the worst hood in New Orleans to stay in. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I'm just, we out here, we out here <laughs> we on outside. these streets, dog. And so <laughs> we, we outside. We try to do something with, a, with an affordable budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and we get bullets coming past the window. So mm -hmm. anyways, they're like, yo, get in this car quick. And so then later that night, we start hearing these shots, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's what they were talking about. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, so that was a moment where I was like, yo, it's not worth it. I'm not staying here tonight. We, we called the Uber and got out of there in, in a couple minutes, you know mm. what I'm saying? I'm like, I can't put my guys in that type of environment. You know, Michael has kids. He's coming home to and a wife, and Nico's newly married, my video guy. And so I'm like, man, wisdom says that we get out of here for real. Yeah. Um, and I ain't going to front. There was a, a, a measure of fear that mm. came on my heart. And so when that happens, I say, okay, Lord, I don't want that to be the reality next time. Yeah. Um, and so help me, like yeah. help me grow in this area for real, mm. you know? That's good. Because I know that you're faithful, you're a father, you've called me to do this, yeah. and you're hands on it, and, and I, I want to go boldly into yeah. these spaces. Yeah, that's good, man, that's good. What are some of the main testimonies? What are some of the big ones that really <laughs> st stand out to you? Like, man, yeah. like maybe leave you in tears, some that yeah. really mark you. So I feel like the Lord has given us the gift of tears uh, while we're out on the streets, man. Like every city we've been to, somebody that does not have any context for Jesus and specifically grown, hard, thuggish men mm. just begin to break down and weep. Mm. Literally every city. But uh, so the first time I went to New York, um, we were in the subways and this dude came up. Uh, no, excuse me. A, a older gentleman, um, probably in his early 50s, just getting on his knees. You could tell he didn't have any context for God, for Jesus, the church. Um, and so he didn't really know what to do. So he felt awkward, but he was just doing it. He got on his knees and just started weeping like a baby. Um, then there was another guy in the New York subway that came in. His name was Leroy. Mm. And Leroy was strung out on something, got in my face. 
this was like the first time me ever in the New York subway. Wow. And so he gets in my face, big old dude, and just starts hollering, going, going off on me. And we didn't even, we weren't even singing at that point. We weren't mm -hmm. even doing any worship, just going off. And my camera guy, he's from New York, and he's like, bro, we need to get out of here. And I'm like, dude, the Lord told me to stay. Mm -hmm. See, that was like a moment that, that boldness came on me. This yeah. is a shot of boldness. Yeah. Um, and I was like, man, the Holy Spirit is like, we need to, we need to be here. And so I start singing, there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. And this dude's demeanor just shifted, and he went from rage to sitting on the park bench and just weeping. Mm. And here's the cool story about, about that. So that was like four months ago. Yeah. Well, me and Michael just went back last weekend. And <clears throat> like I tell you, there's such a grace in New York, man. So we went in last weekend, and two days before that, I said, Holy Spirit, if it's possible, I'd love to run back into Leroy. Mm. This story was real special for me because it, again, it was another uh, faith booster, faith builder in my heart where we leaned in mm. to the Holy Spirit and it came through, right? Mm. And so I said, man, if it's possible, I'd love to run back into Leroy. I get on the plane, tell Michael. I was like, dude, what are the chances we run into Leroy this weekend? Like, I'm wow. just asking the Lord to do it. And so we're there our last day out there doing some, some ministry in, in this open air park. And dude, there was like 60 people around us. And Leroy comes walking mm. up, bro. In wow. the biggest city in the in the world, wow. probably. Yeah. Uh, the most people, you know, in, in one congregated area. He comes walking up and <clears throat> um my camera guy's like, bro, this is Leroy. Mm. And I was like, that's crazy. This is Leroy. And so wow. then I start telling his testimony there. Um, in front of the people that were with us, just what the Lord had done four months ago. And I was mm -hmm. like, do you remember any of this, bro? He was like, kind of, but not really. And I was like, man, the Lord, he's got something special for you, bro. And I was like, dude, there's power. And then I just revved up and started mm -hmm. singing again, and he broke again. Wow. And it was just a beautiful moment. Then we were in the car. I thought I lost contact with him again. I was mm. like, homie, don't leave. I want to take you to lunch today. Mm. Anyways, he ended up getting too hungry. He said he had to go. <laughs> but I thought I lost contact with him again. Mm. But anyways, this crew that we were with out there, they linked back up with him like hours later. They ran into him on the street again. What's the chances, bro, in New York, it's running crazy. into a random dude three times? It's crazy. They cashed my number to him, gave him my number. He calls me later on that day. He's like, bro... He was like, um, they told me to call you. I was like, dude, what's up? We started wow. talking. He's like, Ryan, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but I want to walk this thing out with Jesus. Wow. And I was like, Leroy, I was like, I'm in Florida, but I promise you, bro, we're going to walk this thing out together. I'm mm -hmm. going to resource you to churches out here, get you plugged in, and start teaching you who this man is. Mm. And so that's one testimony that I can give yeah. of the seed that we scattered four months ago coming, mm. coming back to fruition. And I know the Lord is just beginning with Leroy and what he's wanting to do there. Mm. Another testimony was the, uh, the Las Vegas Strip. We had a dude that was, was selling tickets to the strip club he approached us mm. about going to the yeah. strip club yeah we started giving him the gospel and he said bro i'm calling it quits tonight i'm going home he mm. accepted the lord oh, and he went on, home and didn't sell any more tickets wow Amen. and and then we had a crazy excuse me a crazy encounter with um another guy out on the las vegas strip so i had been worshiping and singing for probably an hour and a half and I just threw my hands up to heaven right there on the strip and started worshiping. I really wasn't, I wasn't singing anymore. I was just worshiping, loving on God. And this guy comes walking past me and he's like, bro, what are you going to do with that mic? Mm. And man, just another shot of boldness came over me. I said, homie, come back. Let me show you what I'm going to do with that mic. <laughs> and so he came back and I started singing, not my will be done, but your will be done. Started singing that over his life. I was like, bro, the Lord is not looking to be God of parts of your life. He mm. wants everything. And this dude just broke. It was such a Holy Spirit moment um, uh, out there. One time in, in New York City, we, uh, 
we were out there in Times Square. You're not supposed to be able to do anything in Times Square because it's, you know, it's real touristy and they got yeah. it just locked down with, yeah. with security and stuff. And this police officer says, hey, I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm going to give you 30 minutes. Do what mm. you need to do. Mm. And so we we're getting going. We we're doing our thing. And we we're about to wrap up. And another officer came up to me. He put his phone up. He's like, hey, bro. He's like, is this you? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I literally just started following you three days ago. Wow, come on. And he's like, your stuff is ministering to me like crazy. He started mm. kind of tearing up and we were able to minister to him. And then I was like, yo, homie, God sent you because I need your help. <laughs> I've been advertising for like two days that we're going to do a worship night in Times Square. Mm. And I'm realizing, because this is my first trip from Florida, yeah. I'm realiz realizing y'all got it just locked down. I need your help. Mm. So he calls a homie. And, and anyways, we were able to... We didn't. We weren't able to do it in the heart of Times Square, but we yeah. were able to do it a little bit further out. Mm. He kind of made space for it, and it was just cool how the Lord is just like literally supernaturally connecting dots. Mm. Um, so, so I just man, there's so many testimonies. More and more, uh, I would say <clears throat> another thing. Like, so, so what God is doing is like. I call it the real time portion is on the streets mm -hmm. of what he's doing. And then you have this other layer of what God's doing online. Mm -hmm. And so what God is doing online is just as special to me as what he's doing on the streets. I mean, yeah. We're having atheists engage with mm -hmm. what we're doing. And they're talking like, bro, I don't know why, but I've watched your video like seven times today mm -hmm. alone. I can't stop crying. Had a dude reach out to me uh, a couple months back and he's like, hey, bro, you, 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 I feel like you're a man of God. I'm not walking with God, don't know God, but I feel like you're legit. He's like, my kid has been in the hospital for literally three months since he's been born. He has not been home. He's got wow. something going on in his lungs. Mm -hmm. And Holy Spirit just said, man, pray for him. So I said, bro, give me your number. I want to FaceTime you with you in the room with your baby. Mm -hmm. Pray over your baby. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, he calls me sending me a picture of them leaving the hospital. Wow. The Lord miraculously touched the baby and the lung condition, and the dad gave his heart to the Lord. Ooh, come on. And so, again, that's just all happening online. So yeah. it's been stuff like that. Another guy, you know, is wanting to commit suicide, and Lord, let us, let us minister to him online. And so there's just a ton of moving pieces. So yeah. for me, it's not really numerics what he's doing there, even though that's a testimony in and of itself. Yeah. Really, what I get stirred about is the people. Like, these are real people. Mm. There's a dude in Africa mm. that started doing street worship, and the Lord's breathing on it like crazy because mm. he saw me doing it here Come in the on. U.S. And so it's not just even in America. I mean, it's all over the globe what God's doing. And yeah. again, it's not, it's not me. Yeah. He's using me as he's using many other voices in the nation of the earth and the nations of the earth to, to, to really uh, establish kingdom, mm -hmm. build kingdom, his agenda, what he's doing in the earth. Amen. And so again, that's available yeah. to whosoever believes. Come on. Like we are New Testament believers. Mm. And so miracle signs and wonders should follow follow everybody that believes. There's been Man. over $50,000 that's come into the ministry in the last four months that I have wow. not solicited a penny for. I literally have not asked anybody for anything yeah. and God's just supernaturally doing it. That's so good. So yeah, it just, it feels like he's on it. It feels yeah. like his thing. And uh, so part of what I'm trying to do is stay out of the way mm. and say, Holy Spirit, I don't want to get calculated. I don't want to get formulaic. Yeah. I really want to stay right in the heartbeat of what you're doing. Yeah. And that is having my ear attuned to the Spirit. That's so good. And man, you are so humble, bro. You are so down to earth. When I called you a couple, even just a couple weeks ago, I felt like I've, I don't know, known you forever. Like we've been man, buddies forever and stuff. Guy, and yeah. I'm just so humble and you were just so willing to come out and stuff and it was like short notice and you're like let's do it let me pray about it yeah. and we're, we're ready to roll so man just your heart i, I just love it um as we wrap up i just want to um um i want to ask um what what do you see like um you know my wife and i were worship leaders sure. and we know that we can only pour out what we're taking in in a secret place right in the time where we're by ourselves when no one's watching what what does Ryan Horton, what does Ryan's spiritual walk look like at home? You're busy. You're yeah. doing things. You got a family. Sometimes people I've seen 
they'll get a family, they'll get kids, and all of a sudden it's like their relationship with God is like put on hold because they're so busy and I get it. But what does your secret place look like? If you feel willing to share, because I know some people are like, that's between me yeah, and God. No, but no, no, no. What does no. that look like to be able to do this thing, travel, go out, pour out, doing all these things? What does your secret time look like? Yeah, I, I want to paint a realistic picture. Um, so he, here it is. Um, for, for years on that park bench, the Lord has literally massaged into the fiber of who I am mm. time with God. Um, time with God for me in my journey with him matters so much. Mm. And so I also think that it's something that he's doing in the Americas specifically, mm. specifically in North America. He's making war against time because we have so made it a God, mm. even in church culture, mm. right? And so for me, he's not okay with me giving him five minutes a day. Mm. Others that might can work, right? Um, but, but really, I try to carve out at least a couple hours a day wow. to where it's just me and God. Mm. Um, every, you know, the anointing, the things that come on people's lives don't just happen arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. Um, so the realm of the spirit, we can't earn it. We can't, you, you know, it's, it's unmerited. It's, it's, it, it is by, by his grace, it's imputed righteousness that he's given to us. Right. So mm -hmm. my works don't make God love me anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do think to a degree yeah. that it actually helps, or, or, or I should say it this way, allows God to entrust us mm, more. That's good. Doesn't change his love, right? Yeah. But the entrust that's good. is a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. And so I liken it to, um, to a manager, right, at a, at a company. You're going to make somebody a key holder mm. of, uh, you're going to make them a key holder or, or a person a key holder that's either had experience mm. already in another role or somebody that you've been raising up for years within your company and you know, I've given them certain tasks and they've come through each time. Mm. And, you know, I, I just even think about the key of David mm. um, and how the Lord gave him that. And, and I think... I think it was because God traced it back to he's a man after my own heart. Mm, he's, af he's pursuing my own heart. And so I think that pursuit with God matters so much <laughs> in the way that he would entrust us um, with administering his heart to the body or to the unbeliever or whatever that looks like, right? And so for me, being with God is the secret sauce. Mm. If I compromise in that area, I have nothing. Mm. I have nothing. I mean, we could rev up in, in our own ability and our own skill set. Mm. And there is a measure of skill set that you start developing if you do this church Christian ministry thing for a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can get good in your own strength. But the, the measure of supernatural activity, mm. I believe, is connected to to my time with him. Mm. And then not, not just, here's the other thing that I would say. Maybe I approach that a little bit backwards. I should say it this way. I don't spend time with God because I want him to be present in the public place through mm. my life. That's good. I spend time with God. So that those two years, right? Mm. It took two years for God to really shift the perspective of my heart mm. to say, God, I'm here for love. And I mean, genuine love, like, man, even thinking about that right now, I almost want to tear up mm. is thinking about who this man is to me. Yeah. Like I'm here for love. And I remember telling God things like, God, if, if, if I sit in this prayer room for the rest of my life and I just get to be with you, that's enough. Mm. That, and not, not just enough, but that's more than enough. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, bro, if you're a worshiper, mm. you know, and, and we're all created to be worshipers at the end of the day, Jesus 
us is our reward. Amen. It um, gets no better yeah. than him revealing more of him to us. Mm. It gets no better than that reality. And so then that just that that really did shift my my perspective and my my whole frame of 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 thinking on that park bench. And guess what it took? It took time yeah. for my perspective to shift, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oftentimes we're just like, man, you know, we got to go here. It's going to shift tomorrow or, or this and that. Da, 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 da. And, and I would just even say that to the young minister, the young worship leader. And mm -hmm. I still consider myself young in, in, in that space as well. So yeah. I'm, I'm talking to myself. It's like at the end of the day, man, like, man, build history with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Build koinonia with God. David could reign as king because he killed the lion, because he killed the bear, because he had history with God. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, again, he, you know, he could stand in front of Goliath and not be fearful, not be undone. Because yeah. even if you slay me, man, my reward is him, you know, mm. but I know who my God is. My yeah. confidence is in him, you yeah. know, and, and so at the end of the day, I just think that, um, man, just being with the Lord. So I've kind of got on this rabbit trail now. Let me get back to your to your question. You're preaching, man. You're my, preaching. Yeah, my time with the <laughs> Lord is essential. Um, and then Catherine Kuhlman mm. started saying, and I've just started hearing this, and it's been really <laughs> resonating with me specifically in this season. She said, you know, I, I stopped putting time frames on my time with God because I wanted to learn how to be with him all the time. It's good. And, and I think that, especially in America, that is an art um, that needs to be developed in a greater way. Yeah. Um, is learning how to, there's a, there's a brother named uh, Brother Lawrence. He wrote a book called Practicing the Presence. Mm. And that was the whole premise of his book. Um, one of his main points was, I'll take an idea or I'll take a truth about God. And he was a chef. Mm. Um, and he said, and I'll be in the back and I'll be washing dishes. And he said, I'll just say that truth about God as many times as it takes for my heart to sink up to my declaration. Mm. And he said, and I finally got to a place in life to where I literally could dwell on God, where there was literally no other distraction mm. that would come in my mind, no other thought but God for five minutes at the time, which when you think about it, mm. like if you really, if you really think about that, that, that is a, a task in and of itself, yeah. where there's no other distraction, no other thought outside of, of who this man is. So for instance, he would take, you know, uh, your goodness will follow me all the days of my life or a passage or a scripture. And he'll just, he'll, 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 he'll declare it. He'll meditate on it over and over and over until his heart sinks with it. And then, and then he lives in that reality and he tries to posture himself. He said, I got to a place where whether I was taking holy sacraments, where I was taking communion or I was scrubbing the dishes, mm. where all of it was holy unto God and it was a meeting, it was an mm. altar before the Lord mm. in every aspect of my day. And so that's really what I'm really trying to lean into in this current season. Yes, I still have my quiet time where I say this, this space is protected mm. and nobody can touch it. Like I don't do any, like he is my first place. He's my first priority, my first thing. I don't do meetings mm. before I have that time. And I, I, the Lord's even been, been putting this in my spirit. Man, if you're meeting more than you're praying, you won't be effective in this next era. Wow. This next era. And notice I didn't say season. It's mm. a new era that the body's stepping into mm, and good. so woo, man you got Come me on. preaching up on Come this on. joint but i'm Holy just telling Spirit you here. yeah if, if if we are meeting more than we're praying we yeah. will not be effective it's good um we've got to carve that space for prayer but anyways so i've given you a lot yeah. it's been a little bit of a rabbit trail no, but good. but that's kind of what's burning in my heart yeah. from my secret place my quiet time with the lord yeah uh, it's, i take it extremely seriously now again i did start by saying i wanted to paint the full picture yeah there is not, I would be lying if I said every single day <laughs> yep. is a perfect execution to that. Right, right, right. But I can honestly say 
that I win the I win the battle mm-hmm. in that reality. I might not win the war. There might be some days, you know, three or four days out of the month where it's not there. Mm-hmm. But overall, in the in the grand scheme of that month, bro, I'm pressing in. I'm going for it. I'm fasting. I'm carving out space mm-hmm. to really meet with him. Because I also don't want to stand before people and be an empty shell, bro. That's good. Where I'm just I'm just telling regurgitated information, yeah. Yeah. giving that away. I want to be able to tell the stories of what God's doing in real time. I don't want to tell the testimonies of ten years ago. Mm, I want to tell good. what He did ten minutes ago. Oh come on, yeah, it's right here and it's right now. Yeah. A lot of times we miss it. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about past, you know, and it's like I just posted yeah. that verse yesterday. It's like remember not the former yeah. things. He's doing a new thing. Yeah. Like it's happening right now. It's yeah. been wild. Yeah. It's been wild. Yeah. And he wants to, bro, I feel like I could talk forever. He wants to like continue this thing. Like what, what happened at Asbury? That's always yeah. been on the heart of God. Yeah. That's always been on the heart of God. You know how that thing happened? Well, there was a small remnant mm. that said, we are going to stay past time mm. and we're, we are not going to put any limits on this man. Mm. And when we posture ourselves in that way, yeah. Asbury is what's hap- is 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 the result. That's yeah. what happens. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Every time. I'm not saying that we do these shut in meetings. What I'm saying is the supernatural is manifest every time we make space for him. Yeah. That's so good. And it happens time and time again. It's yeah. not anyone special. It's yeah. not like, you know, they had something special, a exactly. nice stage, nice light show, like nothing. It's just very yeah. like simplistic, but it's it's amazing. Um, we're going to end it right now, but I, I typically don't always do this. Not that it's a bad thing, but, um, you know, sometimes we just, we kind of end out and close out. But I really feel called, if, if you wouldn't mind, um, just leading us in a prayer right yeah. now, because I feel like a lot of people may be watching this. They're going to watch this on the replay. A, maybe they have never heard of, of the gospel before. Yeah. Maybe they're just kind of curious of this whole Jesus thing. Yeah. Pray, pray for those. I want, you to, I want you to hit those people. The second group is the people that are like, man, I've been doing this Christian thing. Like we've all been there. I'm a PK myself too. Yeah. We've been raised in church. We're kind of doing it. But I just, I don't, I don't feel like it's real yet. I haven't had that encounter like Ryan has or that man he has. I want that. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind praying for those two groups, yeah. I, feel, I feel led right now. Yeah. And then uh, we'll close out on there. Come on. Yeah, I want to pray. And I want to say it this way for the sinner and the saint. And it's okay to say that. Um, I, the, the encounter that I had on the streets with that guy in Las Vegas, yeah. I was speaking in tongues and there was the power of the Holy Spirit that hit that space like crazy. Mm-hmm. And it translated online. Guess who was one of the people that liked that video? Who's that? Khloe Kardashian. Really? No the point way. Is, Come the on. point is, doesn't have a ton to do with Khloe other than that. Yeah. We, as believers, here's my segue, as believers, the Lord is not asking you to domesticate who he is. Mm, That's so good. You can be authentically Christian, Mm. authentically deep in love with Jesus, and it's not weird to Mm. people that don't know God. Mm. And the reason it's not weird is because they're searching Mm. for what you have. You don't have to tame it. You don't have to back down. You don't have to get the trendy stuff going. Like, man, he will do something supernatural. So I want to talk and pray to pray for, pray for the, the believer that would say, man, I've just been sitting in this cubicle for the last 10 years and really ain't been a voice, really haven't really engaged with, with, um, with my coworkers, I've been sitting here at this university, whatever your story may be, I'm telling you, saints, now is the hour to activate. Come on. Now is the hour to allow the spirit of boldness to consume you. Boldness is a muscle. And so go out tomorrow and make it your mission to say the name of Jesus to one of your coworkers or whoever tomorrow. Just start simple. I'm going to go tomorrow. And I'm going to try to engage somebody with the, with the gospel message tomorrow. Just see what happens. 
keep doing that. And over time, you'll be standing on tables and mm. restaurants shouting from the Come rooftops on. Come on. who this man is. I'm yeah. telling you, boldness is a muscle. So, Lord, we bless your body. We bless your people. And, God, we thank you that right now the spirit of activation will begin to hit from the north, east, south, and west of this nation. We call the American Sheyad Abakol Rebeseke. We call the American church into its full death destiny even now God and we say that activation will be your portion you might not be a street evangelist but God has got an assignment and got a purpose on your life and now is the time to step in not tomorrow not a few weeks from now not a few months from now but right now God is wanting you to step into that and so father we ask that you would supernaturally begin to drop strategies begin to drop vision and people's heart that might have been aiming and directionless for years. God drop supernatural strategy into their spirit in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we pray right now for the, the person that, that might be far from you, that might have heard of your name but's never walked with you. Maybe they had a relationship with you and they turned their back and they started walking a different way or maybe they've literally never known you. Mm -hmm. God, I pray right now that you would arrest them by, by way of the Holy Spirit, that you would stop them right in their tracks, God, if, as they've listened to this dialogue between me and my brother. And I pray, God, that you would begin to minister deeply, deeply, deeply to them. There's gonna be somebody that watches this podcast or maybe, maybe the YouTube portion and you've been involved in gang activity, specifically here in LA. And I'm just telling you right now, you know who I'm talking to. You know I'm talking to you right now. The Lord is saying, not another day. Not another day will you run, will you go on. Today is the day you lay it all down. You lay your colors down for the banner of Christ, mm. for the banner of Christ right now. We prophesy that over your life. We pray for the non-believer in Jesus' name that you would use this podcast, that you would use what Manny's doing and every effort that this ministry is, 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 is uh, pushing forward to proclaim the gospel. We pray that you would breathe on it supernaturally and that you'd begin to draw souls from the north, east, south, and west of this nation and the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Man, thank you, Ryan. Hallelujah. Jeez, that was powerful. Man, amen. you hit me with the tongue. I got, I got saved again. Bro, right there, man. I got, Woo. bro, when it, when it saw man. me, it saw me, bro. Come on. <laughs> I don't make no, no bones about the tongues, bro. Man. You just walk straight into that. I one. have to, bro. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Hallelujah. No, I, I really appreciate you, man, yeah. for coming out. You just flew in a couple hours ago. You just jumped right on. Amen. So Amen. I appreciate you, your heart. I'm excited to worship tomorrow. It's gonna go down. So I'm so I'm so blessed. I'm so, so blessed. So um, with that being said, man, thank you again. Appreciate you. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Man, so much wisdom was poured out. We encourage you guys, share this video with somebody. Whoever's out there, someone someone can use this. Anybody can use this. Whether like Ryan was saying, you've been in church, whether you don't know God, whoever it is, you can be encouraged by this podcast. Share it, send it to somebody. And with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Yeah. Peace.